Although marathoning a series is one of my favorite things to do, with new books constantly being added to my TBR, I have a bit of a series problem. I am currently in the middle of 61 series to be exact. And in this video, I will be using a TBR jar, which is filled up with prompts that I asked all of you for in order to complete catch up on or DNF series. Okay, since the last episode, if you haven't seen episode one, you can just jump right on into here, but you can go back and watch episode one if you want. I did do a little bit of a clean out of my series spreadsheet. We ended the last episode on 66 and we're starting this one on 61, which is a clean out and then a few have been added. I think there is going to be a rule during this that I have to kind of go back and forth between ones I'm really excited about and ones I'm not as excited about. I wanna be reading an equal amount of those within this vlog. I will say I asked for very specific prompts from people. So I think some of these are going to be very hard and are not gonna leave me a lot of options. I need to mix this. Okay, we're gonna pick this one. I'm scared. Well, this is kind of easy. I started off nice and easy. One your book bestie loves. Okay, this is kind of perfect because I'm not gonna lie. There was one day between this vlog and the last vlog that went out of my channel and the last vlog I read The Cruel Prince in and I was kind of thinking a series marathon would kind of be good. So I do know that a bunch of my friends love this series, specifically the second book. A lot of people say it's like the best one, the second book specifically, not this one. So I think I'm gonna continue that one. Well, mostly because I've already continued it. I'm a hundred pages in and absolutely loving it. But I also want an audiobook at the same time. So we're gonna do another pick as well. And the next pick, I'm gonna try my hardest to make it something that I'm like not as excited for. Okay. Let's do this one. The second book in a series. Hmm. I have my spreadsheet here. This is so hard. A lot of the second books don't have audiobooks. What if we... Okay, the audiobook for Secrets in the Dark by Darcy Coates is on Everend, so I think that's what I'm going to pick. This is a series that I read the first book. I think I gave the first book four stars, but since then, I've had no interest in picking this back up, and it's four books long. I just feel like the first book was what it was, and I didn't really need a series from it, but a lot of my friends do love this, so maybe, I don't know, I have a feeling I'm not gonna continue this one. I just have a feeling that if I read book two, I'm never gonna read book three until something like this, but like, we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it out. That's the point of this is to like DNF or complete or catch up on whatever. So we're gonna try Secrets in the Dark. I should probably tell you about The Wicked King. I'm only about 100 pages into it. I mean, I'm reading it back to back, so I remember everything from book one. I think the setup is really good in book two. It jumped right into the things I wanted to see. We've had moments with Jude and Carden. We've had moments with Jude and her like circle, her inner circle. We've gotten to see a lot of the characters from the past book. We've had like small scenes and we've seen like how their relationship has changed now that Jude is in a position of power. So I really think the setup has been done really, really well. I love that this series is more like classic Faye. I feel like nowadays when I'm reading Faye stories, Faye is just an excuse to have your beings be magical. And specifically in the series, it really leans into a lot of the Faye lore. There's the fact that they can never lie. There's a lot of stuff about them and the fairy realm that I think really has like classic Faye vibes to it. We have the Unseelie Court, the Seely Court. So I have definitely been enjoying that aspect of it that I feel like it actually like feels like Faye, not just magical beings. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm sure I'm going to give it five stars. So that'll be an easy first read of this vlog, but I'm very scared for Secrets of the Dark. I don't know why, but I am kind of terrified. Hi, I am just listening to the audiobook of Secrets in the Dark and I'm doing some laundry. Well needed laundry and I am unsure how I feel about this one. I need more light. There's nothing inherently wrong with this book, but I am slightly bored. If it wasn't Darcy Coates, I would be DNFing it. And I think that's <sighs> interesting. However, I'm so close to reading Darcy's entire backlist that I don't know if I'm willing to DNF this one. So I think I'm gonna continue through this one. If I don't like the ending of this book, I might not continue on to the last two, but I'm not sure. I think I'm just gonna push on a little bit. I will say it did a really good job of like reminding me of what happened in book one. I don't feel lost at all, even though I read it like a while ago, like there is a decent recap that happens, but 
I feel like I'm just missing like the spooky vibes of this and also the romantic vibes because technically this is a horror book but there's like a romance plot in it. I need something. I need something to make me care and I find I'm not caring. That's hard. That's honestly such a hard feeling. So we are going to continue on. I'm going to finish my laundry. I have one more basket I need to hang up and then maybe move on to my Kindle read which is the next Cruel Prince book. Two, three, lock it in, cousin. We're so close. What? I was a bad vlogger and I didn't update you at all during Secrets in the Dark and I'm done it. Honestly, I thought about updating you, but around 50%, I had nothing new to say about this book that I hadn't said at that 30% mark. I was feeling a little bit bored by it, not super invested into the characters, not super invested into like the creepiness because I'd already known what was going down. But I will say at the 60% mark, things really picked up for me. And from 60% to probably around 80, 90% of the book, I was really into it and like excited to learn what was happening. We kind of got an explanation for things that were happening which is what I really enjoyed because I remember one of my big complaints about book one was just how ambiguous the ending felt and so I did like getting those answers but I do think that the plot of this book kind of came a little bit too late. I didn't really like the first half as much. I am going to give it three stars. I am interested in continuing. That kind of sucks because it means it's not a series off my list and I've just like made progress in it but I haven't knocked anything off of the list of 61 books. <laughs> ah. But I am especially the cliffhanger I could see book three being really good so I am excited to continue and I think something about doing something like this that is helpful is it's reminding me when there is a series that I'm like oh I I did like that second book and I'm not gonna DNF the series it reminds me of why I liked the first book and makes me want to continue so hopefully I will pick up the third and fourth book before time gets away from me again but it does mean we need to do another TBR pick so Oh my god, there's so many coming out. We're gonna do this one. In a genre outside your comfort zone. Oh god. So when it comes to genres outside my comfort zone, I feel like we could do sci-fi and we could do Across the Sand by Hugh Howie because I am not a big sci-fi girly these days. We could continue the Brutal Birthright series, but I'm only on book four. So I would still have book four, five, and six to do, but also I have not read contemporary romance in so long. Like, am I even gonna like those? Like, I could DNF them. I feel like horror is probably not outside of my comfort zone. I was like, we could continue in Whispers in the Mist. Technically, we could do Good Girl, Bad Blood because that is a contemporary, like, murder mystery, which is definitely not something I read often. But it kind of feels like a horror thriller, and I do read thrillers. I think our best options for this are gonna be Across the Sand or the Brutal Birthright series. I think that there are audiobooks for the Brutal Birthright series, so I think I'm to go with those which could be exciting because I remember loving some of the other books in that series or it could end up in a DNF of the series because it has been a very very long time since I read those according to my spreadsheet I read the first three in 2022 so that feels like a long time ago oh god I'm kind of nervous I have a problem I stayed up all night last night and finished the Wicked King I went from page 100 to the end. I was up to like 2 a.m. reading. I just couldn't stop. So I didn't update you halfway through. I'm being a really bad booktuber. I am just gonna finish getting ready though and then I'm gonna make a coffee and then I'm gonna get my actual camera out because I'm just filming this on my phone. And then we're going to talk all good things about The Wicked King and Jude and Carden and how I just can't stop thinking about book three. This is kind of weird lighting, but I'm kind of like vibing with it. I have like a little pink light going on right there. Wait, I told you I made a coffee. We should try it. I have been loving the gingerbread coffee from Nespresso. I'm typically an iced coffee girly, but the gingerbread coffee hits different. It's so good. So I have been absolutely loving it. Oh, you can see my laundry. Oops. I really need to clean my room. I hate cleaning though. I hate it. 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 I am a little tired. We did have time change last night. So technically it should feel like 1130, but it's 1030 right now. So the fact that I'm tired <laughs> is not in my favor. However, it's because I stayed up last night. As I said already, I ate up 
The Wicked King. Like, it's pretty much a one-sitting book for me. This series is just so bingeable. The writing style Holly Black has made is just, like, so easy for me to just keep flipping the pages and to just, like, want to know what's about to go down. Specifically wanting to know how, like, the ending of the book is gonna be. I just knew that there was going to be something really bad at the end of the book. I just knew it. I knew it in my soul. My bones felt it. Like, you know, yesterday on Patreon Friends, we were talking about, like, when you're so cold you feel it in your bones. I felt the anxiety in my bones for these characters. <laughs> I don't know how to live with myself anymore. Like, how do I move on from Jude and Cardin and their story? How do I, how do I go elsewhere? <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to dive into a smutty, smutty book? Well, maybe it'll be a good palette cleanser because it's so different because we have already done my next pick because I wanted another audiobook. So I'm supposed to be reading Bloody Heart. We're gonna focus on Bloody Heart today. I haven't started yet. We're gonna start it. But honestly, I'm just thinking about Curtin. I'm just thinking about that last scene. I'm thinking about so many scenes. Oh, like this poor woman after, after everything she's been through, after everything she's done for him. Why do they both have to be so frustrating? Also, I just wanted to kill her sister every single second during this one. It's not how sisters should be acting. I think they really nailed down this like cruel fae world so well and how it made humans who they are and things like that and I just uh even like her other sister Vivi and like the scenes when she has her love in fairy and like how she kind of treats her with like no caring. I'm like oh my god they have done this world so well. It is so deeply what it is. Like it's so deeply nonchalantly cruel. Oh I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I need to read the next book. But we are gonna move on to Sophie Lark. I have the audiobook, so I'm going to be listening to that for a bit. And I think I'm gonna hop on some Patreon sprints. I'm gonna do a lot of Patreon sprints this month because I do have a readathon happening. It is based around Ramathon. We essentially do a sorting hat every year in November on my Patreon. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm gonna ask a bunch of questions. They're gonna come out every five days. You can backlog them, so if you wanna join now, you can look at all the past questions and answer them and still participate. Like, you didn't have to be joined on the first. It is fine. There's like a little folder for them all but I will ask you a bunch of different scenarios there's gonna be four answers that you can answer you're gonna pick an answer and then at the end of the month based on all of your answers for every single question throughout the month I'm gonna tell you what realm you belong in for next year you don't have to pick that realm I feel like it's just for fun and there's a bunch of lore I found a lot of my patrons ended up picking the realm that they were sorted into last year which I thought was kind of fun but you will be getting secrets, hints, you're gonna see the theme for next year. My best one yet, in my opinion. There's gonna be hints, maybe some of the prompts, some of the hosts, things like that. You should join my Patreon. The link is down below. It's a lot of fun and we do lots of reading sprints and fun things and I am a yapper in the discord. Cheers! Probably not too surprising to most of you. I've decided to DNF bloody heart. Here's the thing. I really liked the opening chapter. I thought the opening two chapters were really good and they were setting up like something that I was gonna like and then in chapter four and chapter five they were already doing the deed or doing some sort of deed and I am just a slow burn girly through and through and I'm also not a smut girly for smut. Like, I really do like a plot, which is why fantasy romance works so much better for me than any contemporary romance that I've read. Only other contemporary romance that I think is, like, the vibes I'm looking for is serial killer romance. I just can't get past the, the non-slow burn of this. And maybe, I wanna say maybe in my future I would pick up the book after this because they are a series of standalones. But if I'm being honest, I haven't read these books for two years. I actually read all the first three within like a month. I actually think I might've read them in the same weekend. I think I read them for 72 hours in the Smut Den. And I've never picked them up after that. I've never really had a reason or a want to pick them up. So the fact that I'm DNFing this book on chapter six, I'm probably never picking the series up again. So I think we can go from 61 series to 60 series. <laughs> Time for another pick. Also, listening to Smut is just so awkward and I didn't have headphones on this morning and then all of a sudden, because I wasn't expecting in chapter four for there to be Smut and I was just like getting ready. So I had my phone just like playing it in the bathroom and all of a sudden, there was smut and I was like, oh, headphone time and had to pause it and I just felt very uncomfortable. It made me uncomfy, that's all. Okay, let's pick. If we're being honest, we want something that's gonna let me pick the queen of nothing. I want this one. Highest rated on Goodreads. This is an impossible prompt for me to do because I do not have 
my want to read really on Goodreads. I actually wiped it last year and right now it is only things that I had to add to like my want to read shelf in order to put into new releases folders that I have. So I have a 2023 release, a 2024 release, a 2025 release now on Goodreads. I have to put them as want to read in order to add them to those folders and I haven't read all those new releases. So my want to read is not really my want to read. So I think in order to get the vibe that we need for highest rated, I'm going to go through my spreadsheet. I'm going to pick some of the books that I think will be more high performing, pick like four of them out. And then we're going to go look on Goodreads and see which one is the highest performing. I'm secretly it's the queen of nothing. Not so secretly. Come on. That one could be. I actually think that that one could be it though. Because I don't want to go through all 60 series. That's just not happening. So we're just going to pick a few out and then I'm going to go look at them. I'm going to get my laptop because I didn't bring it over here. Okay, after looking at my spreadsheet, I have a few options. I think the Golden Enclaves is going to be a good one. Two Twisted Crowns is also going to be a good one. Mislaid in Parts Half Known could be. The Queen of Nothing could be. And I also think The War of Two Queens could be. The War of Two Queens has a 4.08. Let's just get Queen of Nothing out of the way. It has a 4.35, so higher than The War of Two Queens. Mislaid in Parts Half Known is 4.08, so Queen of Nothing is still winning. What else did I say? Oh, The Golden Enclaves has a 4.13. Uh, two Twisted Crowns is our last one. 4.43. <laughs> so the winner is Two Twisted Crowns. So we will be reading this one. This is the worst thing about reading books and doing videos like this. I'm kind of disappointed that I can't read The Queen of Nothing, but also I'm looking forward to reading Two Twisted Crowns. So what does that say about me? Hopefully next pick will get me the queen of nothing. Hi, I'm about to curl into bed. Um, I'm actually kind of struggling a little bit with two twisted crowns, which I don't think I was expecting, but I think I don't remember a single thing from One Dark Window, which means I don't really care about the characters. And I'm not loving the new characters as much, which is sad because the new character in this is my favorite from the last book. But he's just such a simp in this book. Like automatically, like one chapter in, he's like simping for this girl. And like what I loved about him was some of like the banterness and like the held back approach to him compared to the other characters. I don't know. I'm only... 66 pages and I'm not very far and I'm gonna keep going. Um, I'm gonna crawl into bed. I believe it should be on KU because the first one is. So I'm gonna go pick up the ebook and read it in bed. I'm really, really tired all of a sudden. We had French chicken soup for dinner and it's just like so rich and so full and it was delicious. But I just feel like I'm a baked potato now and I need to curl up in my foil. Yeah, so um, good night. Listen, I need an audiobook. <laughs> I can't live these days without an audiobook. It's getting bad. I could purchase the audiobook for Two Twisted Crowns. However, I already can read that on KU and I have the physical copy. I think I'm gonna leave it that way and I think we're gonna do another pick so I can get an audiobook going. I just, I need to curl my hair. I need to film some videos today. I need to do some things and I need an audiobook for when I'm just like walking around the house. So sorry, I feel like I normally film my videos to be like, one book, then another book, then another book, but these series vlogs seem to be a little bit more chaotic. I want to finish a series out. I really would just like to get another number off our list or DNF a series, something. I have one from the bottom. It's coming. Oh, 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 they're all falling, but I want, no, I wanted this one. A five plus word title. That's what this says. Um, six, seven. Oh, that's not an audiobook. That's not an audiobook. Do I just cave and I get the audiobook for Two Twisted Crowns? Because the pattern for these books is six words. So the songbird and the heart of stone. Ugh. Do I read it? I have an arc, but I'm supposed to be buddy reading with my patron and it's not out yet for all of them. Oh my God, this is too hard. Um, I have regrets. I actually have regrets. It's too early in the month for me to read it, I think. Mislaid in parts half known is five, right? Mislaid in parts half known. That's a really quick one and that will knock something off. I think I will DNF that series, even though it's gonna be like up to date for me, but I also could really like it because there are five stars in that series for me. What hunts inside the shadows is also five. Murder on the Lamplight Express is five. The book that broke the world is six. I could do the Throne of Honor and Blood, but that doesn't have an audiobook. Oh my god, I have so many options, but also so little options. I can't decide. Why did I pick this? I'm gonna look to see if Everand has mislaid in parts half known. 
Oh, technically half known is got a dash. Does that make it one word or two words? I'm gonna count it as two words <laughs> because the audiobook is on ever and I'm gonna go curl my hair and start this. I've actually made a decent chunk into what's it called? Mislaid Parts Half Known. Unsurprised because it's such a short book. I will be able to finish it today for sure. The thing is with this series is I feel like I really dislike some titles and then I really love others and so I'm never sure whether I want to continue or not. I personally did not like the last book that came out and I think that's why in January I did not pick up this story. I had an arc of it and everything and I think I just struggled to want to pick it up because I just didn't like the previous book enough. However, the book before that was my favorite of the series. I really enjoyed being at the sister school. I thought it was creepy and disturbing and I like the Institute vibes. Typically, I will say besides the fact that the Institute one was my favorite, I like the ones where they're in a world more. And so I definitely didn't think I was going to vibe with this one because they were back at the school. But so far I'm really liking it. I'm really enjoying it. And it's an easy listen and I want to continue listening, which I think is always a good sign. Like, when I want to be reading, that makes me think that I like a book. It's when I don't want to be reading. I put it down and I do other things and I get distracted. Like a good book keeps my attention. I mean, sometimes it's me, sometimes it's the mood. I mean, sometimes I have other things I need to do, but like definitely this one is keeping my attention and I really am enjoying that aspect of it. So I'm excited. I like seeing some of the characters we've met and I'm excited to see where it goes. I think they're about to really start their quest now. It's just been kind of set up in this first 30%. So I think that it's about to like get going. So my thoughts could change. Hopefully they just continue to change for the better. <laughs> There's a spray bottle for the kitties. When they're being bad. I finished Mislaid in Parts Half Known. I think I'm giving it three stars. There were some four star moments for me and some two star moments. I wish I was someone who just loved these the way that other people seem to love them, but there's something really frustrating I find about them at times because I feel like they could be like absolutely incredible. They might just not be 100% for me, which like I think the thing is I love some and I really dislike others. And this one in particular, I loved the explanation we got. I loved the expanding on the world building. I liked how the doors were explained. I liked the nexuses were explained. Like that was so interesting to me. Especially being seven books in, I really liked understanding this a little bit more. What I really didn't like about this book was the actual plot. I'm glad I read this so much later because I knew there were no dinosaurs in it when this book clearly on this cover feels like you're gonna get dinosaurs and you're gonna go into a, a dinosaur world at some point. And like we do for like five seconds. That was a cop out. Like the cover was such a cop out, but I think it's because this book is honestly a continuous continuation of the last book. It feels like the last book's plot was not resolved enough and so we had to resolve it in this book and I think it just felt like these two should have been one whole book and I didn't like the last book. I honestly didn't. I was so bored by it so I didn't think that helped me but I just like, I don't know, I think that they just didn't want to do like something similar to- they didn't want to give away that this book was a continuation of the last book so they put this dinosaur cover on and then it was misleading in my opinion. <laughs> but I really did like some of the conversations in this. I love the conversation on choice on telling people about giving people the information and letting them make that choice not that your choice is bad but for you making a choice for someone is bad and I really liked that conversation there's so much I liked about this and then I just like think the plot really fell flat for me I am unsure if I'm continuing on in the series I'm unsure I think I'm gonna wait to see like reviews for the next book and I think I potentially would let some of them build up and binge read them because they are so short Short, that sometimes I feel like they're not enough story. But really, I was sometimes, I, I do think about DNFing it. Whenever I read a book that I didn't love in the series, I think about just like never reading another book in the series. But there are some characters that I'm waiting for their story. Like I want Christopher's world. I would love to see Christopher's story. And I know everyone else does too. So it's, it's hard. It's one of those ones where they're so short that like they're easy to read even when I don't love them. So I don't think I'll fully DNF the series, but I maybe should because most of them are very mid for me. There are the few that I really like, but for the most part, they're they're just okay. But I know the series is so well loved. I'm having hot takes here. That does have us down one more. So I believe we're at 59 series that we are currently working on. Considering I'm on what? I'm on book four. I feel like we've not made as good an, enough progress so far. So I'm hoping 
hoping whatever I pick next will be another like final book or something I'm on the fence about so that we can decide whether we're gonna DNF it or not. I might pick that tonight or I might wait and read more to Twisted Crowns, but I'll give you an update. Okay, I need another audiobook for when I wake up in the morning, but I am about to just curl into bed and read to Twisted Crowns. I want to make a dent in that. <laughs> So hopefully in the morning, I'll be able to update you. My sister and me are going for ramen in the morning. We're trying a new place, which is kind of weird for us. We are very much creatures of habits, but this place is supposed to rival our regular place. And so like, if it's better, we want to know. So we've decided to go try it. I'm very excited for that. But like when I get ready in the morning, I typically like to listen to an audiobook and stuff. So I'm going to try and get my hands on one. So let's do a prompt pick. And then I'm gonna show you some sneak peek bookmarks. Okay, 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 okay. I dropped so many, but this one. Oh, hey, friend pick. Now I'm gonna tell my friend that I need an audiobook, but I think I'm also gonna let them pick whatever they wanna pick. So let me figure out what friend I'm gonna ask and get back to you. I, I don't like this angle. Hold on, let me. I just asked Brie from Four Paws in a Book to be my friend pick, so I'm just waiting for her message back. While we wait, we could do kitty cuddles. Hi. Oh, he's so fucking sweet. He's gotten so massive. He's so long. But other than that, I have bookmarks to show you. Okay, I actually got Ramathon bookmarks in and a sneak peek at the like colors. That's all you're seeing. That's literally all you're seeing. But just know that when these come out in February, I outdid myself for next year's readathon. Like these bookmarks are 10 times better than last year's and last year's were impeccable. And then I have Patreon bookmarks. This is October's, so too late to get it. But I have bookmarks that come out for my top tier constantly. Like every single month they get one. And I absolutely love this one. It's, I think it's absolutely stunning. And the back is just like a moon. There is like a logo for my Patreon on there and then the other one which is november so you can join the top tier right now i do have space available and get this one this is a like celestial butterfly moth one it's absolutely breathtaking as well the coloring is so pretty in my opinion this is the bag it's just kind of plain and then has my logo on it but like these are both so pretty they are holographic and then I don't think you're gonna be able to see it, but they both have a black edge. I'm making my way through the rainbow because I have thicker bookmarks. They're 32 point. So if you have the Ramathon bookmarks or any of my other bookmarks that are thinner and don't have an edge, they're about the width of two of those together. And then they have a painted edge and it's really, 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 really pretty in my opinion. Ooh, okay. Brie was nice to me and gave me two options. She said she's reading A Promise of Peridot tomorrow if I want to buddy read it. Or if I want something other than romance I need to read A Shade of Madness. Oh, this is a cruel, cruel world. These two are my choices. Very different vibes. I don't know if I'm in the right headspace to read A Shade of Madness, but my name is on this book. In case you didn't know, I loved the first book in the series so much that I am blurbed in this book. So I really should read this book. <laughs> I can't decide yet. I think they both have audiobooks. I'm gonna go look and pick whichever one's shorter. Both audiobooks are 13 hours and 27 minutes long. So now I really need to make a decision. I'm gonna go read Two Twisted Crowns. Ugh. I came upstairs for the first time today. It snowed and it snowed like a decent amount for me to be like, oh, I think winter is officially here and that kind of sucks. I made an indent into Two Twisted Crowns last night though, finally. I feel like we've all been waiting for me to make an indent. I've read a lot of books over this one. I'm 200 pages in, so I'm 45% in. I'm just really struggling with this one. It's really hard for me to want to pick it up. I'm finding it really easy just to like set down and ignore for the rest of time. Or like, I don't know, when I read The Cruel Prince and the Wicked King, I was reading them on my phone and I just like kept reading and I would just want to ignore notifications. Anytime any notification comes up while I'm reading Two Twisted crowns I click it sometimes no notification comes up and I'm just like maybe I'll go check discord or Instagram or other things because it's just having problems keeping my attention I think part of my problem is one my lack of caring for the first story now like I truly need to take back that five stars I do not remember a single thing I do not care about that story anymore Two, one of my favorite things about one dark window that I do remember was the dynamic between Elspeth and the nightmare and their scenes together and their funny comments and and we're definitely missing that until about 30% into this book. Honestly, we're still missing it, but I'm hoping we start to get those again. Three, my favorite character. 
from book one. Everyone was like, you're gonna love book two because this is his like romance, his book. This man is a total simp the second he sees this woman who has literally no feelings. And I don't get it. Like it's so insta love. And like it's hard for me because she has no feelings. It's almost similar to an amnesia trope where just like she doesn't know anything. Like she just exists because she can't remember how to feel. And I'm just like, why am I supposed to care about you if you don't care about anything? And then him, I just, I don't know, I love his moments like with his father, like when he's battering back and forth, when he's taking snipes at the king. I love those moments, but the moments where he's just like head over heels, bowing to our no feeling queen. I'm just like, I don't know about this. I just feel like it's so lackluster. It's so insta love. Like there's no chemistry. I don't know. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. But I am interested to know what happens between like the Rowans and the Nightmare. Like I, I'm excited to see that plot line uncover. So I'm like not willing to DNF it. It's also pretty easy to read when I am reading it. I just have to sit down and read it. Yeah. I'm really sad because everyone told me this one was even better and I'm, it's lackluster for me. Snow, depressing book. At least I'm going for ramen. I hope it's good. If it's depressy, <laughs> I'm going to be depressy. Good morning. I have an eggnog latte. What's new? I love eggnog so, so much. I think I'm gonna eat a chocolate bar after this. We have Halloween chocolate left over and I'm thinking about a Kit Kat. Kit Kat is my favorite chocolate bar. I do like to dapple in other chocolate bars. Like I am someone who doesn't like to eat the same thing over and over again. So like, although I love Kit Kats, they're not like the only thing I eat. So we also have caramels. We have Mars bars. We have some Reese's, peanut butter cups. Mm, so good. How can I resist a chocolate bar with my eggnog latte in the morning? I did have her finish two toasted crowns last night. I can take my bookmark out. That is so shiny, I can't get over it. I'm giving this three stars, probably a 3.5. I did really like this story, but not as much as the first one. I do think I had the ability to like this more if I had read it right after the first one. I found that I didn't seem to care as much about our new POVs. I was still just begging for Raven's chapters, begging to know what was happening with the Nightmare and Elspeth. I lived for the moments of the Nightmare and Elspeth like when the nightmare would be like, Elspeth said this. And Raven would be like, no, she didn't. And he'd be like, you're right. <laughs> she actually said this, but this is what I said. Those were like my favorite, like little tiny micro moments in the story. And I live for them. Like that, those are the ones I'm waiting. Those are the things keeping me turning the page in a story like this. I think the romance between, I'm trying to be spoiler free, our new characters was just too insta lovey for me. And yes, I agree that it was also insta lovey in the first book. But for me, in the first book, they had a shared secret that innately I felt like you would connect over. And I think that that just worked for me. Whereas in this one, they're shared secret that they tried to make a thing just didn't really work because I feel like it wasn't really a secret we all knew it. I struggled because the one character has no emotions the entire time. I did eat up every moment of Elm with someone else. Those were moments I absolutely loved. I loved the little like I feel like the micro moments in these stories really work for me. Every time that the one guy would interrupt and be like dang it I should have knocked louder. I cackled every single time. I thought those were super funny and those are the things I love about Rachel Gillig's writing. I enjoyed enjoyed the overall plot. I just couldn't get behind the romance in this one and I think that that took me out of this story as like I liked the first one better because I really enjoyed that romance even though I feel like that's a really hot take. I feel like not everyone did but I feel like I don't know I really enjoyed those two moments together and I liked the scenes of them together and I didn't hate the scenes of these two together. I just wanted more out of them and I think sometimes maybe that was the hype that was everyone telling me this was even better and I just I don't know she had no feelings how am I supposed to get behind a romance when she has no feelings besides wanting to fuck someone I don't know, but I did think that this was beautiful. I did like the plot. I feel like it's different than anything else I've read. One of my complaints about the plot would be that I feel like I loved the like rules and like the harder magic system we had. And I feel like some of that were broken. Like why are the trees just moving all of a sudden at the end of this? But I still, I don't know, overall I enjoyed it. And the ending made me happy and sad all at once, which is what it's supposed to do. I liked some of the foreshadowing, especially with the naming and things like that. So like, I did enjoy this. I will be recommending this as a duology for people to read. I liked the first one better. We are moving on now. I finally picked. We're reading Promise of Pyrrho. I have started this. I am 
I'm on chapter eight. So I'm about 60 pages into this. New bookmark in. This book has a lot that it has to do for me because I read the first one. Oh, I read that in 72 hours in the smut hole. So February, March last year. That feels wrong. Wait, I need to double check that. The good thing about my spreadsheet is I have it color coded so that I know what year I read things in and I find that very helpful. Okay, yeah, that's correct. 2023, I read it. Actually, technically, I read the first book before it got picked up traditionally and then I had to wait for the first book to re be republished, although that happened pretty quickly, and then the second book to come out, which was this year and then the third book also came out this year so it was a bit of a rush timeline which is interesting so it's been a year and a half maybe a little bit more since i've read this and i really don't remember a single thing but i had a great time reading a dawn of onyx i remember giggling like there are clips of me just smiling giggling in that 72 hours reading vlog i can link it down below if people want to check it out and i loved the banter between these two and i just had a really fun time with it i don't think it is the most well-developed unique world building story ever to exist but it was a fun time read. However, this book is going to struggle because I don't really remember anything and I think the hardest part about that is I don't remember my love of the two characters besides the fact that I remember loving them. But like I don't innately remember them. Like I don't have the feelings I had for them. I remember having those feelings if that makes sense. So it has to do some work to get me back into like the groove of things. It might work in my favor because at the beginning of this they aren't really getting along so I think that they're gonna have to work to be in each other's favor again. So maybe that like build will like build with me and I'll fall back in love with them. The plot, don't remember, don't remember any of the characters, can't lie. I was sitting here like, who's that character? Who's that character? Who's that character? I couldn't even remember which one was the love interest by name. Thankfully we get his chapter in chapter two and I'm like, oh, okay, I know who you are now. So it does have a lot of work to do. I got the audiobook though and so far I'm vibing. I think it's gonna be an easy read. I'm gonna try to read it all today, I think, and do some worky work. I haven't moved. I've just been listening to the audiobook. I did forget to say that finishing Two Twisted Crowns puts us at 58 currently reading series. I'm glad that this at least completed a series so it knocked something off and I'm feeling a little bit better about the number that we're working on, especially because I've been listening to A Promise of Pyrrho. I've doubled where we were last time. So I was 60 pages in before and I'm in chapter 15. So I'm 125 pages in and I am DNFing the series. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. It's just mid. I was listening and I was like, do I care? I don't like not care, but I don't care. There are so many better books and this year I've come across so many series or books that have made me be instantly obsessed, not want to put them down, and have had some like original thing to them that like it's made me realize that I should get rid of some of the books that just feel mid. There's a reason that this has sat on my shelf for a year and I haven't picked it up. There's a reason that I've heard no one really talk about this series, especially the third book that just came out. Like they're they're fun. They're they're not bad books but they're just not everyone's next favorite obsession in my opinion and I'm looking for my next favorite obsession and I need to clear off some of the TBR some way and um, I am gonna DNF this. This is kind of sad because I actually have a net galley arc of the third book because the author specifically gave it to me like she she emailed me a link to get it off net galley so I kind of feel bad, but I'm not vibing, which puts us at 57 series that I'm currently reading. We are going to do another pull right away because I am working today and I need an audiobook or something that I can listen to. But I had a package get delivered, so I figured I'd open it with you guys. I know exactly what this is because I got the tracking notification this morning that it was being delivered. I'm kind of sad because it was meant for spooky season. It's past spooky season now. Hey, it's coming. I'm still going to wear it. I'm actually going to put it on and wear it in the next clip because why not? It. Being international sometimes sucks because things take forever to ship to me. It does look so freaking cute though. Adorable. Ooh, I like the material of this. It says support your local cemetery. <laughs> How freaking cute. We are going to put this on. We're going to go do another prompt pick. We're going to hopefully love our next book. Or honestly, DNF it and just get another number down. I don't know. I just would like to keep my numbers getting down somehow. Miley's very curious about the smell of this sweater. I did pull off A Dawn of Onyx because since I DNF the second book, I will be unhauling this first book as well. This is the indie edition. Kind of sad to see it go, but if I'm not going to complete the series, there's no point in keeping it. The sweater 
so freaking adorable on also really good quality so i'm very happy with that i need to find a place like when i do merch i would like my sweaters to be better quality but i just don't know where to do them from that's kind of my biggest issue we have the jar here i want to go for oh god things are falling out let's go for a top one like one right there new release this one could be hard oh my god um the book that broke the world came out this year, so I could read this one. Or Ghostsmith, which is the sequel to Bonesmith, came out this year, so I could read that one. And that's the end of a duology. Sin of Saints also, I think, came out this year. That one I thought was supposed to be a duology, but I think it might be a trilogy, actually. That one does have potential for me to DNF. Been a liked book one, but I feel like lately in the era of life I'm in, I haven't been loving just like mid stories that are like everything else like I'm very much looking for unique stories in some way and stories that pull me in and although I like the Curse of Saints I remember it feeling a lot like a lot of other stories I've read <sighs> should I do that one because that's like when am I going to read that one otherwise you know what I mean like that's one that I think will sit on this list but also I kind of think that way about the second Bonesmith book. It is available on Everend too. Ooh, it's a long boy, 20 hours. Should we do it? I have a feeling this one's gonna be a DNF. I feel it in my soul, but like I don't want to DNF it without trying. So I think that means that we should do it. We're gonna do it. Let's hit listen now together. Okay, I'm 20% and sorry, this is just a phone clip. I am enjoying this, but like hesitant about it. There is a lot of miscommunication happening. And I just have been talking to Maria, who has also read this book. And I'm a little bit nervous because she says the latter half is kind of just wild and murky and not very good. And the first half is better. I think I'm going to continue because I am just vibing with the writing style quite a bit. It's really easy to listen to and I'm intrigued. And I did forget a lot about what happened in book one and how much I did enjoy some of the aspects of book one. I want to hear more about the wolf companionship. I kind of forgot about that and I'm excited to see that again in this one. It gives me Lee Bardugo, Shadow and Bone vibes with like the saint and everything. It's just like the closest comparison. I will say it annoys me that this series is marketed as adult. It feels so YA to me. I don't remember if there was smut in the first book, but the writing, all of it feels so YA that it should be marketed as YA, I think. It, it belongs in that audience, I think. Oh, and there's no recap. There's definitely no recap being done in book two. So read as close together as possible, in my opinion. But as I started to remember things, as things peaked my brain, I have been enjoying it. So I am going to continue on, at least for now. Oh, we've reached a smut scene, which is why these are not YA. However, I am team YA can have smut, so I still stand by what I said. I know that's a hot take for a lot of people, but like, I feel the way I feel. I've decided to DNF this book. I'm 40% in and I kind of just realized I don't care. It's one of those things where I don't hate the book. I actually went and re-watched my thoughts in the vlog where I originally read this, which was only about a year ago. So in that one, I really liked the start and by the end, it felt like a 3.5 and I said that Will as a character really cared read this book for me and I agree like Will is still just carrying the story and I don't really care about any other characters I only care about Will he's the only one doing anything interesting and one of them's a saint saint I guess quotation marks she should be doing the cool things I think I'm probably gonna give this book the same rating I gave the first book which is a three and then it's gonna sit here on my series shelf for another year another two years until something forces me to pick this series up and finish it out and why am I keeping books that I don't want to continue especially as someone who when I love a book all I want to do is marathon that entire series all I want to do is dive into that series and so I just I don't think that I will regret DNFing this. I don't think that I will ever care what happens. I don't think I care what happens at the end of this book. I think that says a lot about feelings on a book. So I've decided to DNF it, which puts us at a total of 56 currently reading series. However, because of my stance of where I was like, why am I keeping books that I need something to force me to continue. I am reconsidering a series I read in the last episode, episode one of this. And I think I'm also DNFing and enhauling the Legacy Trilogy by Matthew Ward. I liked one and two, but even after I read number two, I said I don't see myself reading number three anytime soon, like anytime soon. Cause 
it feels like it's wrapped up and it's a contained story and there's no audiobook for book three but there's audiobooks for the other two and like Matthew Ward has released new books since then so I don't think this is ever getting an audiobook I don't think the series sold well enough and I think the only way I would read the series is with audiobook or doing something that actually forced me to continue so I am DNFing that series as well getting rid of these chunky chunky boys frees up a lot of room on my shelf that kind of feels good it also puts us to 55 currently read series which also feels really good considering I started at what like 79 currently read series in the first episode we are already absolutely killing it I think I'm going to do one more pull and then we're gonna end this episode truthfully as I said since the very first book I'm hoping that we pull something that lets me read the queen of nothing but that hasn't worked in my favor very much that one flew out should we do it this definitely does not let me read The Queen of Nothing. Most apprehensive about. You're just asking for me to DNF another book. Can I pick up a book and just DNF it without reading? Because the book that I'm going to tell you is probably this series. I literally have a bookmark in here. There is literally a bookmark on page 94. I stopped on page 94 of this three years ago? My Patreon it was inspired by this book. They have land dragons. They're kind of like dinosaurs, but they're dragons. And that's where the land dragon tier came from. And so I think I've just always not wanted to unhaul this. But it's been sitting on my shelf for so long. None of my friends really liked the second book after we all loved the first book. I've read 100 pages and had just put it down and never picked it back up. And I stare at these all the time. Um, I'm not even going to start them. I thought I was only like 20 pages in. I was 100 pages in. We are also DNFing The God King Chronicles by Mike Brooks. Yeah, I gotta do it. I'm never reading them. Like, <laughs> I'm never reading them. That's 54. I could happily end this episode off with my currently reading being 54. So we are calling it quits for now. Episode three, I'm actually hoping to film another one this month so that it can come out to you in December. If you have any ideas on how you would like to see me pick my reads in the next episode, please leave them down below. If you watch this episode without watching episode one, I'm gonna leave episode one on the screen here for you to check out. If you'd like to leave me an emoji just to say you were here, leave me me is there a cactus emoji because that would be cute and right now right after i end this i'm gonna be starting my next vlog which is melanor reads plays my tbr game she had full control over what i'm reading for the next week